This is Tim with the Online Big Blue, bringing you the best of New York Giants Sports Talk Entertainment. Oh, the wink was on with Bob Papa yesterday. It's really one of his first, like, sit-down interviews with the Giants. Um, not with the Giants, but with the, pretty, pretty much with someone as important as Bob Papa. Um, and I just thought it was interesting because they, they talked about pressure. They talked about attacking. They talked about his philosophy. But I thought one of the most interesting comments that he had was the fact that pressure comes in many forms. That people talk about how, how people talk about how he attacks and it's all it's all about pressure. It's all it's all about attacking. But he says pressure comes in many forms. He says pressure can occur basically with a four man rush. It's going to be how you set up your defense and how you put your right guys in the right position, which I think is a which, which I think is a perfect philosophy. Because I said yesterday, or I said yesterday, I said a couple of weeks ago when we did the Wink video that um, when he got hired, that he's going to be more of an attacking style. And people ask me, do you think he is going to attack if at this point in time, do you think he can, you think he'll continue his style with the lack of uh, pieces that he has that he didn't have in Baltimore? Do you think he'll still continue that attacking style? And I said, yes. I said, in my mind, Wink is the kind of guy that just throws caution to the wind. He's going to do the best that he can. He's going to not, he's going to continue to run his philosophy and his style. And the thing is at that point in time, and he's not going to change his ways. He is going to find a way to create the pressure that he wants to have to make this defense successful. And I think that is an interesting philosophy, or I'm not even going to say a new philosophy, but it's a newer philosophy for the Giants. Uh, which we haven't had. The Giants haven't had that philosophy in uh, quite a while now. Um, so it's it's you know it's going to be you know, and I love it because he also had the comment that he's not built to play it safe. And I think that's what you want as a, that's what you want as a. I mean, that's what I want a defensive coordinator. And he even said, no doubt, that's going to be fun. That's the fun part. When the, when you have to see what you can think or your weak link is and work on it. And, you know, basically that's what he's just saying. You're going to work on the weak links. You're going to surprise some people. And I'm very, I'm very excited to have the wink here. I'm very excited to see what he can do and move forward. The coaching staff is starting to, uh, uh, I guess the defense coach staff is kind of, it's starting to mend and you know, not mend, but kind of round itself out with Brian Cox coming in and Kevin Wilkins coming in as well, adding to the staff. We all know Brian Cox is the former jet linebacker, Miami linebacker. He's been out of the league in a while. He's actually he turned 54 the other day. His last job was with the Atlanta Falcons in 2014-16. Uh, he was a defensive line coach. You know, they also went to also the team that went to the Super Bowl and lost. So, um, and it's interesting because they're also bringing in uh, Kevin Wilkins. And Kevin Wilkins joins the Ravens back, I think, in 15. He was a video intern. And he did that for like two years. Uh, and he was the Baltimore's video operations coordinator from 2017 to 2020. And he started doing uh, special projects for the Ravens defensive coaching staff in 19. And then he was made an assistant in 2021. It's fun and interesting because he was a video operations coordinator. Um, I was in charge of, and I've I mentioned this many times. I, and when I worked in the league, I was in charge of the XOS digital replay system. And, and I was, I was given, I was given a couple different titles. Uh, but one of my titles was, uh, I was, I was the connectivity, uh, ma a manager. The connectivity manager was one of my titles. And basically what I did is I, I ran the, I ran the, XOS digital system at the time. And what the XOS digital system was, it was basically cutting edge back in the early 2000s because it allowed you to uh, basically record a practice and set it up on a server so you the coaches staff could watch it real time. So my job was to maintain that operation, go through game film, and uh, help operate the system during team meetings. Um, so this is basically what uh, I was thinking to myself going, oh, God, God, I could have been Kevin Wilkins. That's basically what I did you know, in my early part of my career. Um, so I, I just I just found that I just found that kind of interesting. But you know it's gonna be it's gonna be interesting. And like I said, I think with the with the attacking style with the wink, I think it's gonna just be, I think it's just gonna be. I mean I'm I'm very excited about. It. I I don't, I don't even believe I need to talk about this. Nate's soldier, he's gone. Everyone that follows the team or knows anything about the team knew his contract was gonna automatically void on Wednesday. Oh no, excuse me on Wednesday. It was automatically voided. This was this was not something that was some surprising news. That's why I, that's why I called it. Uh, uh, no, why is this news Thursday? Because people are like, oh, Nate Solder's gone. Yeah, this was scheduled 
for him to be gone for a long time. <laughs> he will carry a $4 million dead cap hit on this, on this season's cap. Um, and that was because of when the Giants restructured his contract last fall. Of course, he, he, he signed that big contract. And he was the highest played offensive tackle back in 18. He played in, uh, he played in 48 games, of course, for the Giants, including an entire uh, season. He opted out of the 2020, uh, excuse me, the 2020 season. Uh, Passed last year, six sacks, 36 total pressures, and 92, 192 offensive snaps. He didn't start every game, but he played every game. Um, you know, the Giants are, you know, we're, 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 like I said, we're, this is, this is just a cap issue. I mean, we got a cap issue and Solder is going to be gone. There, there's no, there's no if ands, or buts about it. I mean, I, I just can't believe some people are like, oh my God. And, and yeah, finally Nate Solder's gone. This, this was preordained a long time ago. <laughs> oh my God. Sometimes when you think giant, you, you, you see the glimmer of hope sometime with giant fans, you see the glimmer of hope. With some giant fans, because there, I would say ninety five percent of the giant fans are are, are are fairly knowledgeable sports fans. But you you have that segment, and you, and you think you see a glimmer of hope that they're learning something, and it turns out they're not learning anything. They're not learning anything about the sport. But you know what? I'm not going to sit here and bash Nate. Did he take the money? Yes. Anyone else would take the money. Was he probably more of a system offensive lineman in reference to the pa- you know reference to the Patriots? Yeah, he was. But at the time when we signed him, he was the best offensive tackle available. And you were looking to build on that. And you were looking to, to help, uh, help, you know, reinvent the line a little bit. So, I mean, at the time, people loved to sign. I thought it was going to be a good signing. I thought it was going to be good. I, I just think that I thought, I personally thought that he was overpaid. But I, I was like everyone else. I thought that he was going to help solidify the line. It just turned out that he was a system player. And there's plenty of players in this league that are like that. They fit in certain systems. And certain players don't fit in certain systems, other systems. So you know what? It's, you know, we, you got to wish. I was getting trouble for this, but you got to wish Nate well. Send him on his merry way. Hopefully he can, if he wants to continue his career. I know he's got everything going on with his young son. So if he wants to continue his career. I mean, I think that's, um, I, you know, you know, you just got to, you just got to wish him well. I love it also now because people are like Mike Kafka's excited to work with Daniel Jones. Kafka said he's athletic and can make every throw, but admits that it's going to be an 11 on, it's going to be an 11 man Oregon operation. Me and the giants are going to need to fortify the team around him. If they expect Daniel Jones to succeed. Yeah. Joe Burrow is that guy. He didn't do anything because he just sucked. And then I love people like, well, look, if they love Daniel Jones, what do you want the coaching staff to say? Do you want the coaching staff to come out and say, uh, he sucks? <laughs> I mean, of course, everyone's going to, everyone in the building. That was like the video the other day when they were like, well, all these, when, when the Sports Illustrated ranked him um, 32nd overall in starting quarterbacks, and, and they were like, well, but certain people, on, certain people around the league think he's great, and they unnamed all giant coaches and staff. <laughs> Yeah, of course. You're not gonna you're not gonna trash the kid in the media. I mean, it's I don't know. <laughs> it's just crazy. It's just crazy to me. We're gonna have a big stream on Sunday. We're gonna have some surprise special guests stopping in Sunday, knowing it's not the Dahmer. We're gonna do so. We're gonna do some fun stuff. We're gonna talk some giants. We're gonna talk some draft. We're gonna start doing more of our draft preview videos or uh or um Break down a certain players. We started doing that last week. We kind of got away from it. But we're going to jump back into that, I think, starting probably on Monday. But like I said, join the big stream on Sunday. 10.30 Eastern Standard Time. And again, this is Tim with the Online Big Blue, bringing you the best in New York Giants sports talk entertainment. And as always, if you can like and subscribe, you ring that bell, you think that means that you're uh...